When it comes to Crimea, the Russians keep reminding us of the red lines, threatening to blow up London with their nukes in one second, or however long Solovyov, the Russian presenter, thinks Russian nukes can hit London. Because repeatedly threatening to nuke civilians is definitely the sign of a wonderful, not warmongering nation, and not the sign of a desperate barbarian horde controlled by a genocidal dictator trying to win an illegal of war of aggression that they started. Oh wait, no, <laughs> this threat is not about Crimea. This threat is about any action anyone takes to stop Russia invading Ukraine. Wow, a little bit more uh, over 30 seconds into the video and we have already mentioned Russia's nukes. <laughs> Solovyov would be so proud of me. Crimea is more than just territory illegally annexed by Russia. It is the home of the Crimean Tatars, a proud race with a long history and heritage from the Asiatic, Islamic, Mongolian and Eurasian world. The Tatars have not had it easy. They were ruthlessly persecuted by the Soviet Union and now they continue to be persecuted by Russia. I'm Maria and today I want to discuss who the Tatars are their history, their present, and their future in a liberated, democratic, prosperous Ukrainian Crimea. So who are the Crimean Tatars? Well, they are one of the indigenous people of Ukraine, and about 250,000 of them live in our nation. They call themselves Kremli, which can be translated as Crimean. And though many speak Russian and Ukrainian, their main language is Crimean Tatar, a Turkic language, and the vast majority of them follow Islam. The Crimean Tatars' origins in the Crimean Peninsula can be traced back to the Middle Ages, from as early as the 11th century. Their descendants of the Polovsian tribes, who themselves are a mix of Mongolian, Greek, Italian, and other origin. Basically, whoever was present in that area during that time. In the 16th to 18th centuries, the Nogai tribes, who are from the Eurasian steppes, also migrated to Crimea. Now, among the Crimean Tatars, you can meet both people with a Caucasian appearance and those with Asiatic features. They are descendants of the Nogai. Since 1441, the Crimean Tatars had their own national state, the Crimean Hanate. Despite being in vassal dependence on the Ottoman Empire since 1478, the Crimean Huns nevertheless pursued their own policies, often ignoring the demands of the Ottoman sultans. The Hanate was a formidable power until the end of the 17th century. Poland and Muscovy annually pay tribute to the Huns to keep them from large-scale attacks. Muscovy, as many of you will know, is of course the alcoholic, abusive, cynical parent from where Russia comes. The influence of the Huns began to decline in the 18th century due to internal crisis and due to the increasing pressure from the Russian Empire. According to the Peace Treaty of 1774, Russia obtained from Turkey the abolition of Crimea's vassal dependence and in 1783 the Hanate was annexed to the Russian Empire by Catherine II. The reaction of the Crimean Tatar to this was mass emigration. 
According to historians, in the 1790s, about half of its inhabitants left the peninsula for the Ottoman Empire. Obviously, as Muslims living in an Islamic nation was safer for them than staying under the brutal Russian rule. By the 1850s and 1860s, approximately 200,000 Crimean Tatars had left from Crimea. Basically, the Tatars have been in Crimea for hundreds of years, and it's important to note this, as this immigration away from Crimea is only a precursor to what happens under Stalin's Soviet Union. The Soviet government accused the Crimean Tatars of collaborating with the Nazi regime during World War II and decided to deport the entire population from Crimea to Central Asia. I mean, this accusation is hilarious because the Soviet government actually signed a treaty with the Nazis to become allies before Germany betrayed them. Yeah. That's right, the Soviet Union had an alliance with Nazi Germany for rule over Poland, but that's a story for another video. Back to the persecution of the Tatars. The forced deportation took place from May 18th to 20th, 1944, under the orders of Josef Stalin. The government labeled it as a resettlement of the Crimean Tatars on charges of collaboration with the Nazi occupation during World War II. But the truth is that the Tatars had been targeted for repressions for many years prior to the war. Those who were to be evicted were in large parts identified by non-ethnic Crimean Tatars' neighbors who worked as collaborators for the Soviet government. The eviction operation was carried out by units of the NKVD, and people were given only 15 minutes to assemble and allowed to take only a minimum of personal belongings. After that, the Crimean Tatars were transported in freight cars to special settlements in the Urals or to Central Asia, mainly to Uzbekistan. Can you imagine being forced to leave your home with only 15 minutes to gather your belongings? The conditions during the transport and in the resettlement camps were extremely harsh, leading to a high death rate due to disease, starvation and exposure. The only comparison of conditions I can think is how the Nazis relocated prisoners and undesirable to their death camps around Europe. In 1948, Moscow recognized the Crimean Tatars as permanent immigrants, and those who went outside their special settlement without permission were exposed to the danger of 20 years of imprisonment. Even before the deportation, propaganda incited hatred of the Crimean Tatars among local residents, branding them as traitors and enemies of the people. Can you believe that the Uzbeks were told that cyclops and cannibals were coming and were advised to stay away from the foreigners? After the deportation, some locals even grabbed the heads of the newcomers to see if they were growing horns. Later, after learning that the Crimean Tatars share the same face as them, the Uzbeks were surprised. The deportations of 1944 are widely recognized as one of the most tragic events in the history of the Crimean Tatars, and it is estimated that at least 46% of the Crimean Tatars' population died as a result of the deportation and the conditions in the resettlement camps. This video is about Tatars, but it is important to note that 
Chechens and several other peoples were forcefully relocated in similar conditions by the Soviet government during and after this period in different parts of the Soviet Union. After the collapse of Soviet Union, Crimean Tatars finally got the chance to return to their homeland, which was then part of the newly independent Ukraine. However, their return was not without its challenges. The Crimean Tatars faced discrimination, limited access to the housing and employment, and other obstacles in their struggle to rebuild their lives. Despite these challenges, the Crimean Tatars continued to fight for the rights and recognition of the injustice they had suffered under Soviet rule. And finally, in 1998, the Ukrainian parliament recognized the 1944 forced deportation of the Crimean Tatars as a genocide. This recognition was a significant step in acknowledging the Crimean Tatars' suffering and the trauma they endured during the deportation. However, the Ukrainian government has taken responsibility for the fate of all its citizens, including the Crimean Tatars, who are returning to their homeland from places of deportation. In 1989, the Verkhovna Rada of the USSR adopted a declaration recognizing the illegal and criminal repressive acts against people subjected to forced resettlements and ensuring their rights. In 1991, Ukraine repealed legislative acts in connection with this declaration. This recognition provided the necessary legitimacy for the restoration of the property and other conditions of the repatriates to their pre-deportation state. But unfortunately, their challenges did not end there. In 2014, after the Russian annexation of Crimea, the Majlis, representative body of the Crimean Tatar people, declared that it would remain loyal to the Ukrainian government. The Russian annexation of Crimea had once again threatened the security and rights of the Crimean Tatars. Since Russia annexed Crimea in 2014, the Crimean Tatars have faced persecution and harassment at the hands of the Russian authorities. Despite being indigenous to the region, many Crimean Tatars who oppose the annexation have been subject to restrictions on their freedom of speech and assembly, as well as intimidation, arrest and detention by the Russian security services. The Crimean Tatar National Movement was one of the most significant in the times of the USSR, and thanks to the cohesion, unity, and courage of the people, they were able to return to their motherland. The mass return of the Crimean Tatars coincided with the collapse of the USSR and the declaration of the independence of the Ukrainian state. However, from 1991 to 2013, the Ukrainian political community had a very difficult and ambiguous attitude towards the restoration of the collective rights of the Crimean Tatar people, particularly the political rights and the status of Crimean um, autonomy. Kiev's mistakes in failing to restore the rights of the Crimean Tatars cannot be overlooked when discussing the annexation. For 23 years, even the land issued remained unresolved, and many of those who returned from deportation could not wait for the allocation of land. 
it was only after Russian troops invaded Crimea that the whole of Ukraine realized that the Crimean Tatars had been participating in peaceful rallies opposing the Russian occupation. The attitude of Ukrainian society towards the Crimean Tatars changed radically. But unfortunately, the peninsula is now ruled by Russian occupiers. The policy of the Russian occupiers towards the Crimean Tatars is clear. All those who do not obey must be suppressed and crushed. People who cannot be controlled are either imprisoned or forced to leave Crimea under threat of punishment. The Russian occupiers are squeezing Crimean Tatars and ethnic Ukrainians out of Crimea, and the most active Crimean Tatars are arrested and thrown into prisons, often accused of terrorism. Sentences of 14 to 19 years in prison are not uncommon. Crimean Tatars have organized peaceful protests against the occupation of Crimea, turning them into personal enemies of the authoritarian Russian regime. Over the past three years, they have faced a whole range of persecution, including violent abductions, uh, fabricated criminal cases, the closure of the Majalis, the executive body of the Kurultai, the suspension of the broadcast of the ATR TV channel, and searches in madrasas and mosques. Essentially, a hidden deportation is taking place. On February 26, 2014, a rally of thousands of people in support of the territorial integrity of Ukraine convened by the Majlis of the Crimean Tatar people took place under the walls of the Verkhovna Rada of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea in Simferopol. This rally proved the falsity of Russian propaganda, which had been trying to convince the world that all the inhabitants of the peninsula sought to reunite with Russia. In honor of that memorable and brave rally, Ukraine launched the Day of Crimean Resistance to the Russian Occupation. However, even after this date, the Crimean Tatars did not stop fighting. It, it is impossible not to mention Rishad Amatov, the hero of Ukraine, posthumously. On March 3, 2014, in Simferopol, he dared to go on a single picket against the Russian occupation. Several people from the self-defense of Crimea grabbed him and took him in an unknown direction. A few days later, Ametov's body with traces of torture was found on the outskirts of the capital of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. Currently, there are over a hundred political prisoners from Crimea in Russian prisons, the vast majority of whom are Crimean Tatars. Mustafa Jamilov, the leader of the Crimean Tatar people, has been prevented from returning to his homeland, and the chairman of the Majlis, Refat Chubarov, is unable to visit Crimea due to criminal cases opened against him. The annexation of Crimea by Russia not only violated international law, but also had devastating effects on the Crimean Tatars, who have been subjected to human rights abuses, persecution and discrimination. Despite this, the Crimean Tatars have persisted in asserting their right to self-determination and have gained recognition as one of Ukraine's indigenous people. Moving forward, it is important for the international community to continue to hold Russia accountable for its action in Crimea and to support the Crimean Tatars in their quest for justice and equality. 
efforts should also be made to raise awareness about the situation in Crimea and to advocate for the rights of the Crimean Tatars. With the recent adoption of historic decision in Ukraine, including the recognition of Crimean Tatars as indigenous people and the granting of certain rights, there is a hope for a better future for the Crimean Tatars. However, the occupation of Crimea remains a pressing issue and the international community must work together to find a peaceful and just resolution to the conflict. The injustice that the Tatars have faced are just one example of many injustices that have taken place in Crimea's history. I recommend watching my video about Crimea's history as your next video if you want to learn more about many of the lies Russia tells to change Crimea and Ukraine's history. Let me know what you knew about Crimean Tatars before and what else you'd like to learn about them. Thanks for watching and if you haven't yet, Please subscribe to my channel, it will help me make new videos for you. Slavokr!